Hello and a very warm welcome to everybody. I am Shreya Agrawal and you are watching the Mint Expert Shots. The 2021-22 union budget has been eagerly waited as it is expected to set into motion plans for lifting the economy from the pandemic induced slump. There's no other option than the experts pose it that the theme of the budget would necessarily have to be sustainable revival of the economy and employment creation through targeted tax incentives and higher spending on infrastructure while maintaining an eye on fiscal consolidation the budget would be expansionary with the higher than trend expenditure allocation for infrastructure and welfare measures there would also be an additional head of expenditure in this budget the vaccination program as we get jolted out of a black swan blindness it is but clear that the way we assess risks has forever changed for corporations for companies for startups for individuals and for the country as a whole too With me is Deepthi Deshpande, senior economist from Crystal, and I would like to understand my opening question with her. Really, is that what really are the imperatives for this budget? As I said in my opening remarks, we have been jolted out of our black swan blindness. The way we measure risk has fundamentally changed. What does it really mean for the country at large? Deepthi, over to you. Thank you, Shreya. Thanks for having me here. I think if you look at this budget this budget has a big challenge something that we've not seen in the last couple of years uh but if you put down the more, two most uh, you know uh, uh, biggest priorities or imperatives for this budget I think they can be clearly put into two buckets number one is the fact that in the last uh, couple of uh, uh, months or rather quarter 2 and quarter 3 we are seeing early stages of recovery So the main focus of this budget will have to be uh, supporting this nascent stage of recovery. Overall, Crystal believes that GDP growth will be around ten percent in fiscal twenty twenty two, which is on the back of a very weak base and the fact that globally economies will see some sort of a growth spurt, and that will benefit us at least in the first half. There are a couple of other things which are also supportive. For instance, inflation is now softening. so the monetary policy is expected to be supportive uh, interest rates will be low for longer and therefore that should also provide some support to growth in fiscal 2022 but having said that growth is not uniform for instance uh, we are recently seeing that manufacturing is picking up at a faster pace than services and we feel that some of that momentum or some of that nature of recovery will continue even in fiscal 2022 where in services mainly the contact based services will be slow to recover so i think the nature of recovery will have to be kept in mind for any kind of business uh, uh, measures in the budget to be undertaken the second uh, imperative uh, in our view is essentially the fact that there are a number of anomalies that got created or pandemic induced uh, anomalies that got created uh, in the last year and those will have to now somewhere be uh, corrected through budgetary measures at either either in fiscal 2022 or over time so a couple that i can measure for instance one is the fact like i mentioned manufacturing is doing slightly better than services uh, policy support has been there there has been some benefit from pent up demand there's also some shift of demand from services and towards manufacturing which has happened so supporting services especially the ones that are hard hit also those that are more uh, employment intensive will be especially important from the perspective of this budget another thing that this budget might need to look at is supporting smaller firms or micro enterprises to reduce any kind of risks that could come in from there uh, crystal recently did a study which suggested that uh, if you look at the impact of the pandemic it's been more dramatic on these smaller firms given that they have a weak bargaining power they face liquidity issues their access to uh, uh, formal channels of capital is relatively uh, low etc so support to these will be also crucial one more segment of the economy which is required to be looked at is the urban poor which were also hit quite uh, significantly by this pandemic and support in terms of income or jobs to these was relatively low or little compared to the uh, to their rural counterparts and finally i think uh, investments will be one thing to look at in this particular budget uh, uh, we need investments to come back into the economy and perhaps public investments will have to take the lead here especially in infrastructure there are studies that go to show that you know when there are times of uh, turmoil public investment uh, impact or positive spillover tends to get amplified than uh, during normal times 
So it will have to be the government who will have to be the first mover. But we are also aware that financing is a challenge when it comes to uh, government spending on infrastructure. So I think some of those will have to be laid down quite clearly in the budget as to what is the intent, how is investment being planned, how do we plan to fin finance it, whether through our own resources or private sector or uh, foreign capital, etc. Um, I think beyond all of this, health and defense will continue to be uh, imperatives, and I think allocations to these are bound to uh, be there even in this budget. Uh, Deepthi, thanks for that. Uh, that was meaningful. I want to understand from you that the sound bites increasingly coming from the government space is really has been that it will be a budget once in a lifetime, a dream budget. But t tell me one thing that realistically, how much of that really is possible? Do you think the budget can really be expansionary in nature when I mean, we are gra grappling increasingly with the tight fiscal situation? You alluded to the fact that there is some recovery being from GDP numbers, but of course that comes at a very low base, as you mentioned in opening remarks. I want to understand from you that what can realistically can the government really do? Will it be a combination of monetary and non-monetary managed measures? Will there be a huge reliance on foreign capital? How can you stimulate investment in a tight fiscal situation like this that we are in? I think uh, although there are there is a huge laundry list of expectations from this budget, and why not? Because we were hit quite considerably uh, by the COVID-19 pandemic. And uh, if you look at the Indian uh, economy, uh, what was different is that it's not just the COVID pandemic that gave us some sort of a setback. The Indian economy is already on a, uh, 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 already growth was already slipping even before that. So perhaps there's all the more a need in terms of policy support, stimulus support, etc. But I think we need also need to look at the fact that we are not quite in a position to stimulate the economy by spending excessively this time around. Debt levels have already risen and we need to be watchful of that. So over time, other than stimulating growth in fiscal 22, over time, the government will also have to keep a key eye, keen eye on how fiscal deficits will have to be tapered down. And while doing that, how growth can be gradually you know, brought back towards its trend level. So it's a very difficult budget and it's going to be very difficult for the government to uh, uh, go on an expansionary path. So like you yourself rightly said, they'll have to go in for a mix of monetary and non-monetary measures. They will have to spend a little themselves from whatever legroom can be made available, revenue resources that they can garner from a variety of sources. Uh, at the same time, they will have to encourage capital to be coming in from the private sector and also from outside of India. So it will have to be a mix of reforms plus a bit of spending support, uh, uh, etc., so as to uh, support recovery and also ensure that medium term growth gradually comes back towards trend. Thank you, Deepthi. Thanks for that. Any last quick takeaway, your appeal to the finance minister, what would that be? <laughs> <laughs> no, I think like, just like uh, each one of us, uh, I'm as curious as how they're going to manage uh, this budget. It's a very tough task. And uh, let's all hope um, whatever we've expected happens. So yeah, that's all. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks for having Thank me. You. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.